so first I'd like to challenge the credibility claims that they made. Um, he said that we should try to do we should try to do more to enforce the laws that um, teenage drivers aren't um, following. Like for instance the fact that they carry passengers and they're not allowed, un un allowed to. So this is pretty much the police pulling people over under suspicion that they're under the age of 18 to carry a passenger. So all they really have, so pretty much that it, it's expensive to file police reports that are very valuable. So the more police reports you have to file just to, just to pull people over and ask them their age is really not necessary and it cause more resistance towards the police. More than there already is, more than there is now. He also said that drivers are influenced by um, some of what their parents do, like how they sip wine and they start driving. My, this is my opposition to that is that drivers, especially of the age, they should already know not to drink and drive. And that's kind of something that you learn in the fifth grade, rather than 16 years old, you're just not learning that you shouldn't drink and drive. It really is making sense. But at the same time, there's a high accidental rate that 25% of teenagers still, 25% of teenagers at the age of 16 died and with the blood alcohol level of 0 0.08, which is above the legal limit now. So pretty much, like, if you were 18, then you'd be more self-conscious or aware. But, you know, so. And then he also said that you lose a main form of transportation, such as not being able to get to work. But many people I know today in this present economy can't really afford a car. So what they're usually doing now is buying bus passes and taking the bus to work. Or, you know, sometimes they'll just ride a bike to school and ride their bike to work. So you really wouldn't be taking a form of transportation because they still be able to get to where they need to be. Even parents you see now today, even when you come to the college campus, you still, you still see parents dropping off their kids to school. Um, um, as Eddie like, brought up, about the whole economic situation that if you don't spend your money on a car, you have more money to like spend on like other things. You know, like cars aren't a necessity, they're more of a want. So if you have so you can pretty much save the money that you use on a car on necessities. So if you can't really afford a car in your current economic status economic status then that means that like you know you pretty much like you're poor and like you really need the money to, to for the house. Um, Neil said that he said he said that um, age eighteen that when you're eighteen and you're seventeen and a half during the current policy that if you're seventeen and a half you can walk in and get your learners learners the driver's license at seventeen and a half. So 18 year olds would be just as inexperienced, if not more, than 16 year olds. Well, our policy that we're trying to approve, get approved is that you start at the same age you are now, like 15 and a half, and then continue up until 18, like the GDL, the gradual, graduate driving license. And he also said that in his experience that he never had to drive anywhere over 35 miles per hour. But I read that it's actually required that the driving instructor take you on the freeway for, because you, you're going to go on the freeway, so if they don't test you on that, then that just heightens your risk of an accident. So having more experience being 18, you have more time to get used to it.